We'll connect to our breath. And breath is this great connector to our interiors, our, our land, our inner land. Now, why do these regular rituals or ceremony of yoga, of movement, of meditation, of prayer, right? Because in it, in these actions, We can nourish our relationship to the land. We can express our relationship to this conscious land. So allow the ribs to expand. Allow the lungs to feel these winds, these, this wind breath. Let that breath, the sound of the breath, the feeling of the breath start to get steadier. It takes a little bit of a, just a teeny little effort to work with a technique for breathing. Ujjaya. But in that tiny effort, it helps magnify our relationship, our connection to our breath. We'll work Brahmari. Hopefully you're in a space where you can make some sound. And even if it's a, um, a quieter sound, remembering that we're feeling the buzz, the feeling the vibration, the location, and the resonance, how these pitches interact in and through the body. Let's give ourselves sufficient um, breath moments. Three Brahmari buzzes for the abdomen, the pelvis, the soft belly, the back, the sacrum, the hips. Three breaths for the rib cage, heart, shoulders, back. And three Brahmari breaths for the ears, mask, throat neck, brain. So when we're ready, we'll do that on our own and I'll take my sound down.
We're probably finishing up a last little bit or last round Bromery. And when you're through, reconnect with a that breath tide that sweeps through the entire inner landscape from the pelvic floor. The top of the brain and skull. So as we feel each breath interiorly, we're feeling how we touch the land, how we contact this body. Do we contact it with love, with presence, or does it feel kind of cursory? So. We're bringing all of our expression to bear. This is, these are great moments. I'm gonna adjust legs, leave the left leg close to ground. Step the right foot over the left leg. Seated spinal twist. So my right knee is tenting, pointing towards sky. Inhale, press the right hand fingertips down, reach the left hand fingertips skyward. Exhaling, hook that left elbow over the right. Feet pressing. So feeling that. Not only the foot contact, but the space of the foot. If you're inclined, left hand fold down, grab clothing, or even interlock. If the shoulder's not quite ready for that degree of motion, just stick with the, uh, the fingertips pointing toward the sky. Release. Inhaling as you unwind, just adjusting legs into knee pile. Mm -hmm. 
we're still right over left. Arms reach out to side, exhale, left elbow over, right, left over, right, eagle. And inhaling, unwind, arms and legs. Seated spinal twist, other side. So the right leg along the ground, the sole of left foot planted to the earth. This is my left knee pointing up. Inhale, press the left hand fingertips down into the ground. Right hand fingertips reach up. Pressing the fingertips away, away, away. There's so much, so much space and length in here. Exhale, hook that right elbow over the left thigh. So these rituals, these ceremonies, you know, we often refer to this yoga as ceremony. But these repeated actions that we keep coming back to, our practice, our rituals, they're vehicles, they're crucibles for our expression, our our love, our curiosity. And as we express our, our love of this land, and I'm pointing at myself, my body, because land is everything in which we, we stand. And I could just spend 60 or 90 minutes in this state, in this love, in this curiosity, in this wonderment. It sure beats spending 60 minutes in cynicism or distractions. If it's appropriate for your right shoulder, right hand, fold down, getting a little bit of clothing to grab onto or interlock.
And when we release, inhale, unwind. Slight adjustment for the legs, moving into knee pile. Reach arms out to the side and eagle. And hooking our right elbow over our left. Right over left. And just lifting, lengthening through the torso, the solar plexus. That deep breath can sweep through the abdomen and the heart. Good. So rather than a a kind of a continental divide in the gut. Feel that breath, those breath winds moving, interfacing, contacting the abdomen, the diaphragm, the heart, the back. And then as you inhale, we'll unwind the arms and the legs. And to give these legs a little straightening out, a little stretching, straightening out, lie on your back and have your roll nearby. Inhale, head and shoulders off ground. And slight adjust, there's a little abdominal pressure. It attunes, helps me attune to the top of the sacrum and the lowest part of the spine. Exhale, reach the left leg out. And then continuing to curl the tailbone or locate the tip of the tailbone, reach way through the ball mounts, pull low belly down. Inhale, bend left knee. Little abdominal pressure. Helps you locate where spine and sacrum meet. Exhale, right leg outreach. Find the tip of the tailbone, keep curling it. Pull low belly down. And feel inside the ball mounts, all of those ball mounts of foot. Inhale, bend right knee. Let's do four more per side. Let's do those at our own pace because everyone's super familiar with these. So on your own, when you're ready, continue. Just the very expression itself, how the breath lands in the abdomen. That sweet quality of contact. May that be our expression, right? So there's really nothing to do here. There's really nothing to do. Of course, we're motioning through some abdominals just to help bring this, our awareness and our thankfulness, our curiosity, our wonderment into some areas of the body. But 
just the expression of meeting, meeting the land, meeting the body right here, meeting the abdomen. Loving regard, ah, the knee, ah, the pelvis. Here you are today. Nerves and tubes and capillaries, ah. Here you are today, again, another day. Great. It appears we're primarily, mostly done, all the way done. Good. I'll do it again with a roll. So a roll goes between the legs, and the legs reach up. So as you inhale, feel as deeply into the torso, near the pelvis, the sacrum, the hip sockets as you can. That spreads, it's contact, contact, contact. Squeeze the uh, roll. Letting those muscles register and work all the way, all the way to the bone. Curl tailbone, exhale the head and the shoulder blades off the ground. As you work those muscles, they connect all, all down to this almost fuzzy connective tissue around the bone. Pull the low belly down. It's highly innervated. A little fuzzy, fuzzy connective fiber tissue all around the bones. Inhale the head down. It's actually creating little sparks of communication, little tickles of hello by all this muscular involvement. Squeeze the roll, knowing, feeling that that squeeze is reaching, reaching, communicating all the way down to the bone, curl tailbone. Exhale the head and the shoulder blades off the ground. To reaching and touching the very substance and minerality of the body. Pull low, belly down. Inhale, head to ground. We'll do five more. Let's continue at our own pace. The bones are a major player in our endocrine system, our hormonal uh, creation and regulation.
And it's all right to squeeze those muscles. Get a nice little drip of electrical, chemical signaling starting to spark through the muscles and ligaments and into the bone. And it can be a thoroughly enlivening experience. Let's take part in that. So each one of these poses can bring us into such full, rich contact. When you are through, set that off to the side. And we'll set up for dolphin. A little daily dose of dolphin. Inhaling into the upper back and the sides of the ribs and armpits. Allow the head and the neck to soften. Exhale. Knees off the ground. Take the left foot and the toes, wrap it around the right heel cord. And as you sink some weight, it can be some weight, into that right heel, keep pressing through all the ball mounts. Lift through both sit bones. We do this particular stretch, this little back of calf or Achilles stretch. There's a tendency to sag into the hip sockets. We keep lifting the sit bones away from the collarbone. Then we'll switch, setting the left foot down. Use the right foot, toes, anchor, left heel. And as you depress, keep pressing through all the left foot ball mounts. Let's feel how, how your breath wins contact and sweep and through that sacral area, that low back area. Feel how those breath winds sweep through the shoulder blades, the back of the heart. Soften the neck. There you go. That's it, Marissa. Just letting that neck, those neck muscles. There you go. And set the foot down, set the knees down. Now straight away, we'll slide the hands under the shoulders, downward dog. So very little rest. <laughs> so in a push-like action, I can move the bottom tips of the blades apart, broadening. And in a squeezing, pulling in action, pulling together action, 
and turn on the chest muscles as if tweezing the thumbs toward each other. And just to put a fine point on that, for those of you who kind of feel these directionalities in the body, when I'm kind of pushing out, broadening the bottom tips of the blades apart, I feel a great deal of that outreach through the littlest fingers, the pinky and the ring. Those outer fingers tend to connect energetically and structurally to the back of the shoulder. And then as I tweeze, it's the thumb and the index, right? tweezing in, and those fingers tend to connect energetically and structurally to the front of the shoulder and chest. So I'm getting both and. Outer shoulder, front shoulder. Good. One deep breath into that upper back. Yeah, it gets, it gets awesome up there, huh? <laughs> Pyramid. Inhale the right foot forward. Blocks optional. Soften through the neck. Engage the legs. Let that breath expand to meet the body, the sides of the ribs, the low back, the brain. As we dehabitualize the, the largeness or the smallness of our breath, sometimes our breath can get quite contained, just like our Our mentalizations can get quite partitioned and contained. So just keep breathing a little bit larger. We keep playing with that, that spatial habit. I'm sure we all have a, a spatial habit. Bend that right knee. Inhaling, step the left foot back about six or eight inches, and we're moving just directly into lunge, hands down. So now reach back to that left leg. And tweeze a little bit, that inner ankle in. So it's a little bit like I'm pressing out through the inner foot and drawing the outer half of the foot toward my kneecap. A little spiraling action. And inhale the right foot straight back, exhaling lower, pulling the shoulders away from the neck, all the way down. The hands forward somewhat, cobra, reach back through the big toes, the inner parts of the leg, inhale. Pulling the low back away from the thigh bones, the mid spine away from the low spine. Exhaling lower, downward dog.
So those outer fingers, and that outer part of palm, pushing outward, reaching outward. And those inner fingers and that inner part of palm tweezing in, you'll feel how it starts to communicate through the shoulder, right? So we touch, we contact this landscape with these various engagements. You can feel these chest muscles, ah, breathing. Contacting, there's warmth, there's a warm contact. Maybe it's an effortful contact. Pyramid, inhale, left foot forward. Blocks optional, legs vibrant. Legs vibrant, not because it's the right thing to do, but because in that vibrancy, there's this expression of this is how I can be in this body. This is what I can participate in, you know, gratefully in this body. There's, there's this viv, this... We can be really enthusiastic. We can be really in wonderment about that. Or we could get really tired and dried out by that. It's entirely up to us, I guess. <laughs> And bend that left knee, inhale, step the right foot back several inches. Keep the hands down, lunge, exhale, keep reaching back through the heel. I should mention knee is up, knee up, heel up. And pressing outward through the inner right foot and the outer edge of the foot. What are we doing in that outer edge of the foot? Kind of flaring those foot bones, pulling them back toward my kneecap, and pressing, pressing through that foot. And inhale, both hands to ground, exhaling. The left foot step back, lower all the way down. Cobra. Inhale, hands push the earth. Pull the earth. Exhaling, lower, downward dog. Reach out through the outer palm, outer digits. Squeeze in through the inner hand, the inner digits. Inhale the right foot forward, lunge, knee up, heel up. And do this in parts. And the first part, just like before, is getting this back leg engaged. So I'm pressing out through the inner foot. Drawing back through the outer foot, back meaning kind of pulling the outer half of the foot toward my kneecap. And as I'm getting all that wonderful turning and pressure and torques and 
You bring the left hand to the outside of the right foot. We're setting up for a twisting, extended lunge. Okay. So I've hooked my left arm over right thigh. Left hand fingertips touching the earth. Now, if this becomes a little too uh, wobbly, you can set the knee down. That is a possibility. I'm going to keep working with the left knee up. And if you're enjoying the process, reach the right arm overhead. Twisting extended lunge. Keep pressing through that inner left foot. All these little twists and wraps and reaches. <laughs> there you go. There it is. So keep working that inner left leg, Marissa. There it is. Oh, that changes a bit. <laughs> there. Yeah, so that whole thigh bone is kind of rotating or, or spiraling, if you will. Kind of spiraling back, my whole trunk spiraling forward, wrapping the shoulder. Inhaling, unwind, coming out of the twist part of it. Get the left foot forward until you've established this right foot pressure. And we're moving into vertical splits. Blocks optional. Raise left foot. Inhale, set that left foot down, exhaling, chaturanga. Inhale, upward dog or cobra. Exhale, downward dog. All right, lunge, inhale the left foot forward. I'm leaving my hands on the ground for a moment. So I can establish this really energized right leg, back leg. Press, press out through the inner foot. Activate that outer half of the foot. And then we'll walk this right hand to the outside of the left foot. Okay, so I've brought my right arm to contact the outer left thigh. Now, strong leg. Got that back leg still on, yes? I hope so. <laughs> Reach this left arm overhead. And the pose is just an invitation, a little bit of a puzzle. How do I bring this breath? How do I bring this loving contact, this quality of wonderment ever deeper into the body?
inhaling, bring that left hand down. Step the right foot forward, might take a, a little scooch just to rest <laughs> for, for a singular moment. Vertical splits, the rest is over. Re um, raise right leg. I'm still reaching, reaching just as if lunge out through that entire right leg, lifting. Let the breath seep into the back of the heart. Let that breath penetrate the interior of the spine. Let that breath reach the throat and the brain. You're bathing your brain in this loving contact. And inhale, place that right foot down softly. Exhale, chaturanga. Step left foot back, lowering. Inhale, upward dog or cobra. Exhaling, downward dog. And gently set the knees down. Um, have a look. We haven't done this pose in a while. Lying half Varasana with, uh, with a little bit of leg help. So I've got my strap ready and it's ready for my right foot. I'm bringing my left, just my left leg into half Varasana. Okay. And then carefully, gradually, I'm making my back sway to the ground. And let's just say I can get my back to the ground. You can draw the right thigh to you or you can get a hold of the foot. I'm using a strap this, this day and drawing that leg toward you. So stages and increments. My first stage or my first approach. I'll turn so you can see the other way. First thing is I'm just getting the left foot beside my hip and half Varasana. So the top of my left foot is on the ground. I like to keep my right foot on the floor as I'm walking my way back. And for you, it might just be to your forearms and that is plenty. Great. And gradually, gradually, maybe you're setting both shoulder blades on the ground. Maybe you're grabbing the right leg, drawing it toward chest.
right? When we release, we'll switch sides. So you may need to tip onto your right side slightly to extricate that left foot from half rasana. Now to set the right foot up in half varasana, you may need to sit all the way back up and, and work your way down to the ground. It just, it just depends. My preference is to work half varasana with the knee on the ground or very close to the ground. There you go. And seeing and feeling the legs and the pelvis through the eyes of wonderment, gratefulness. Oh my gosh, these legs, these sensations, these, this body. Here we are, another day. All right, now when we bend that left knee, when we set the foot down, we're pretty, pretty close to Shavasana, just tip. So you can safely and carefully get that right foot out of half Varasana. We'll straighten the legs out, Shavasana. As you relinquish the technique of breathing, feel that the air, the breath, effortlessly moves more deeply into the face and the mask of your headspace. So you're feeling the breath with more of the sinus cavities, the soft palate, the area under your eyes. It's like you're feeling the breath with your tear ducts and your mucosa lining. Sometimes you might even get a little buzzy by relaxing and feeling the breath so in contact with the face and the head. The 
feel that buzzy quality spreading. Revealing itself through the heart and the shoulders. Because once we recognize it, it just starts to be found in the abdomen, in the back, in the pelvis. When you're ready, if you're ready, bend knees. I will turn to his side. Press to seated. Namaste.